and stuff like that. So, or I should say homicide in America. And uh, it should be an interesting show. So everybody, just hang in there, get a cup of Jabba, and relax. Scintillas in the stream Hoping for what's true I'm trawling for honor in this shadow Borealis stolid crown Arches over the Puget Sound If you would like to hear Night Dreams Talk Radio on your local radio station, let them know. Tell them to check out www.nightdreamstalkradio.com and thank you. Night Dreams Talk Radio Network brings you the World Paranormal News with James Creechbaum. Now, the latest news. This is Night Dreams Talk Radio Network News, and I'm James Creechbaum. Giant paw print sparks Australia big cat debate. The discovery of a large feline print in the Blue Mountains has reignited speculation of a mystery big cat. For many years, the legend of the Blue Mountains panther, a mysterious feline that has been sighted by numerous witnesses across a large area of New South Wales, has continued to endure. Now, a local exploration group known as Blue Mountains Explorer has claimed that it has found actual, actual physical evidence of the creature in the form of a giant paw print situated in a remote location. After documenting the find, the explorers contacted the Australian Hunting Association for advice and were reportedly told that it was unlikely that the print belonged to a native species. If there really is an exotic big cat roaming the wilds of New South Wales, it's possibly that it or its predecessors escaped from a circus or were released by an exotic pet owner. A couple claimed to photograph Bigfoot near New River Gorge. A husband and wife living in a remote corner of Fayette County in southern West Virginia claimed to have encountered and photographed a Bigfoot. According to a, the witness named Humphrey, a hunter, coal miner, and former U.S. Marine, the encounters occurred in the woods near his home where he had set up a hunting blind. On a series of consecutive nights, food that he had put out to attract game had been disappearing more quickly than was usual. Everything was gone within hours, all of it, he said. There's something heavy moving behind the blind. It stood there for, oh, about a minute. Then it came around to the right side, then moved in front, passing in front of the lights. The witness goes on to say, I said, let's just wait here till dark and see what happens. Well, we had only been sitting there for about 15 minutes when it came back. We looked out, and Sheena, the wife, says calmly, there he is. And the witness said, I said, there, there, who is what? Bigfoot, she said. Then he just turned and walked off. We heard him go through the laurel thicket, and then he made this sound like you have never heard before, like a bear's death moan. As brave and wood hardy as Humphrey may be, he says he declined to return to the blind for another month, and when he did, he found it shredded but not like a bear would tear it apart looking for food. Daytime meteor fireball explodes over Slavonia and Croatia, setting off earthquake detectors. A meteor exploded over Slovenia and Croatia on February 28th at a 1034 local time. The exploding meteor resulted in a loud sonic boom whose accompanying shockwave was strong enough to register on seismographs as an earthquake. There was a strong rumble and tremors. The tremor, which was felt throughout the city, was initially mistaken as an earthquake. Now, many, uh, many uh, pictures showed white smoke in the sky estimated to be at a height of about 30 kilometers. Antarctic ice walls 
protect the climate. Inland Antarctic ice contains volumes of water that can raise global sea levels by several meters. A new study shows that glacier ice walls are vital for the climate as they prevent rising ocean temperatures and melting glacier ice. Current measurements indicate an increase in melting, particularly near the coast in some parts of Antarctica and Greenland. These increases can likely be linked to the warm, salty ocean currents that circulate on the continental shelf, melting the ice from below. If you have a news story you want us to share on Night Dreams Talk Radio, contact us at James Night Dreams Talk Radio News at gmail.com. From the compound in beautiful Gig Harbor, Washington. From the Pacific to the Atlantic to you worldwide. Good evening or morning, depending on your time zone. This is Gary. I'm ready to take you on that trip. Stay tuned. We'll be back with our guest. And we'll get into homicide in America. On Night Dreams Talk Radio. This is Gary on Night Dreams Talk Radio. Is this Dave? Yes, it is. Good well, to hear from you. Well, Dave, how is your day going? It's going great. Everyone goes great. Great. Every well, day is a better day. That's what Bill Nelson said. Well, that is true. Hey, what is going on with this virus in California? <laughs> we now have had three deaths here in Washington State. Yeah, I don't know. That's not my matter of expertise. I... Um, you know, I, I don't know that stuff. You know, the way I see it, I've lived through a lot of different things, and we'll get through it, you know? I, I It was so. bad. You know, there, this is nothing compared to the Spanish flu pandemic that happened in 1918, which is one of the reasons why 1926, the book that I wrote, 1926 Homicide in America, um, that's one of the reasons why there was such weirdness back then because everyone experienced death my uh my wife's great grandmother died of it and left her grandmother an orphan oh wow yeah, yeah. What, Bill, 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 yeah. 50 million people passed on because of that virus mm-hmm. i'll tell you what this and then we'll get into about you trying to find in our state right now toilet paper is almost impossible <laughs> you can't find you know, water you can't find can the stores are just like sold out people are panicking here in this state yeah and you know toilet paper that's the that's the if you don't have food what goes toilet paper well after a couple of days you won't need it <laughs> well you might need it well dysentery will set in if you don't eat yeah but yeah. Any, anyway dave you know david what made you and what, what, what gave you the idea right about these books yeah homicide about- in america Oh, about oh, about nineteen twenty-six. Yes, sir. That came around because I've written five other books, and uh, they're all about California crime. And um, I noticed that there was a lot of crime, a lot of odd crime, that happened in nineteen twenty-six. So I kind of made notes of those things, made a folder, and put it in there. And uh, after the fifth book, I realized I had enough of these weird crimes to. Uh, put another book out for it because if the ones that happened in california i put in my books but uh you know the 
I tried to branch out into the whole nation with this 1926 book because it was a whole nation thing. Wow. I, I, you know, I read part of your book, and I like how you break up each scenario in it. Oh, thanks. I, I try to make them readable. My books, you know, history and even true crime is hard to read sometimes, and uh, they tend to get padded and things. And I, I was a writer first before I became a historian. And um, I wrote fiction and uh, got about nine short stories published, started writing for different magazines, and especially music magazines. And, you know, uh, when you're writing for music and things, it's like you inform and entertain. And I think the same thing should be true about history. A lot of people do it really good. Yeah, but the problem is... That's what I try to do. Yeah, some people, though, don't. Like I said, you kind of break it down on each, you know, each event, each person. And can you, you know, tell us a little bit about, well, what was going on during that time frame? Well, 1926, you know, it's like uh, seven years after the war, World War I. You know, people marched to that war, which was really just a European family feud. And, you know, they went for God and country and... And uh, came back changed. Uh, not only did the war change them, but also during that time, most people didn't leave uh, 20 miles from home. You know, people didn't travel that much. And all of a sudden, you got all these people, farm boys, city boys, they're all mixing in together, too, all these different religions and things. And then they were all in Europe together and in France. And like they say, you know, how can you take the boys back on the farm after they've seen Paris? Interesting. So you had people that had their minds open from traveling. That's one of the, the biggest things to make your mind uh, open. And uh, at the same time, everyone experienced death with the pandemic, too. And there was a lot of people walking around with really bad wounds, um, missing limbs, Faces destroyed. They were out in the street. They they were not hidden, and you know the the memory of that was everywhere. Uh, you know, like in England, they used to send out entire villages all together. They called it the buddy system. But then they'd all get killed together, <laughs> and you know a town would be void of men. So you know that war was really bad, and you know they didn't know about. PTSD. They called it shell shocked, but that's only when you couldn't even move. But, you know, people were very, very um, destroyed by the war. Then you got at the same time, they started prohibition. Women got the right to vote. So women started saying, I don't need to wear this whalebone, whalebone corset anymore. I don't need to wear this long dress. You know, I'm not going to dress like my parents. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to I'm going to smoke a lot of first generation Americans wanted to be Americans. They, they left the old country behind my grandparents included. Oh, you're so right. And, you know, a lot of things so, went on in that time huh? frame. A lot of things went on. Oh, a lot of things. Then they had prohibition, which was just a joke. And what it did is, you know, it made drinking even more fun because it was illegal, with a wink-wink. And also, there was a lot of cocaine and marijuana going around back then. Oh, yeah, you're right. So, yeah. And also, there's, there's the um, mass production of automobiles got really cheap. You know, by 1926, there were used cars around. You know, a car wasn't like something, uh, you know, for extremely rich people. Now the car's that were for the middle class were being sold. So everyone was getting a car. So you had this. And also, you know, when this happened, I'm just writing about this story for my next book that happened in uh, 1923. But in Sacramento, um, Sacramento was really condensed uh, at that time in the downtown section. But if you drove out a couple, three, four miles, it'd be out in the fields. And of course, now it's all suburbs and stuff. But Back then, all of a sudden, cars became like this great makeout device. <laughs> and so people were, were like driving out to country lanes and making out. And that caused like people to come out there and rob them. 
and then they didn't report 